Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Now that you have discovered God now that you have discovered you now that you have discovered what god has given you look up please miles monroe calls it and the dictionary defines it as potential do you know what potential is potential is what a thing can become but it's not potential potential means untapped um, resources whether human whether material whether mental when you talk of a potential or you talk of a thing in its potential form, it means that there is value that can be derived from it, but not at that state. For instance, we celebrate and we thank God for the gift of crude oil in this country. But if you happen to go and watch them mine oil, when oil actually comes out and you see it, you will run away from that place because it's a dark, slippery paste of smelly substance and yet that is what has powered the economy of many nations that oil that comes out is not the one your car is looking for that's not the one you will queue to pay for discovery is good but can i tell you this there are many people with dreams with notebooks full of dreams the greatest way to bring your dream to pass is to wake up from that dream if you wake up from that dream then you are ready to make that dream come to pass but for as long as it remains a dream it remains there forever everybody who turned their dreams to reality did that by first waking up please look at me you must obtain grace from God to refine two aspects of your life number one you must refine your gifts number two in fact in order of priority when it has to do with development you must refine your mind then you must refine your gift if you refine your gift alone you will still be frustrated there are two aspects that must be refined when it has to do with development number one is your mind number two your potential the mind is a very important component as far as excelling and greatness is concerned in this kingdom why because you see the bible tells us that um how does it put it now it says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus there was a mindset and a belief system philippians 2 5 that jesus had that made him great it didn't just say let this power be in you it's not only the power that was in jesus that you need you also need the mind that was in jesus without the mind that was in jesus the power that was on him will be useless in your life you need both his mind and his power everybody say his mind many people want the power that was in jesus but you do not want his belief systems your belief system is a summation of your paradigms your viewpoints your perspectives can i tell you we are made or destroyed by our belief systems i have taught it here there's no need going to, you know to share it again but maybe just for one or two minutes let me tell you this that our mindsets are formed largely from number one culture number two our past experiences is that true number three our failures number four our association number five our levels of exposure all of these are factors that become the shapers of our belief systems the average person in nigeria and africa by the time you are age 10 by the time you are a teenager you would have been exposed to too many activities that would have respectfully speaking dehumanized and demean your perception of yourself therefore the bible says romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2 i beseech thee brethren by the mercies of god that ye 
present your bodies it says a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god he calls it your reasonable act of worship verse 2 says be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed say transform what does it mean to transform to evolve into superior versions of yourself that's what it means to be transformed to be transformed means to evolve into superior versions of yourself like a fly evolves from egg lava pupa and then adult you must obtain grace from god to evolve you've heard me teach it that your destiny is looking for you but not this current version of you the version of you that your destiny is looking for you are yet to become it the most important thing about success and greatness is not the achievements is what you become or have to become to obtain it what you have to become to be great is greater than the greatness itself are we blessed don't forget this the most important component as far as your growing into greatness is concerned is not the greatness itself and the possibilities that surround that realm is the person you are forced to become until you attain that greatness becoming is greater than doing you really become successful more from becoming than doing but the people that do know their god knowledge they shall be strong becoming then they shall do exploits it is knowledge transformation and then action not knowledge and action knowledge transformation is the reason why we do right things and get wrong results because you only do right things when you have become everybody say development i'm challenging everyone under the sound of my voice therefore that we have to obtain grace from god if we are truly serious about manifesting our kingdom destinies and rising unto greatness we must obtain grace from god having discovered our giftings we must begin an intentional a radical and non-emotional non-emotional project of transformation when you contend for transformation emotionally you will not go far when you feel sleepy when you are awake when you feel angry when you feel hungry no you must enter a covenant with yourself that come rain and come sunshine every 24 hour that god gives me will a major part of it will be invested in my transformation how are you transformed the bible tells you number one through the renewing of your mind how do you renew your mind by supplying into your mental space superior information superior word-based information and then repeating them until they superimpose the negative thoughts that have surrounded your mind hearing the truth once is not enough you must hear it again and again until it gains dominance over your mind then the bible now says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks you can declare in prayer and then all of these other things and then the bible also says for as he thinketh in his heart or mind he says so is he he didn't say so he will become you already are what you are thinking mental transformation is a miracle believers especially people who are largely spiritual and passionate about god because of that drive to encounter the holy spirit the power the anointing of the holy spirit many times we who god has trusted with grace for the miraculous for signs and wonders we have um we have fallen prey as far as emphasizing the importance of being mentally transformed because we feel what is the need for having an enlightened mind after all i have anointing after all i can pray after all i'm spiritual it takes more than that as far as your excelling is concerned jesus did not just wait until he was 30. even before we see him praying we saw him in the temple learning when satan came to him he didn't say i assume he said it is written are we together you must obtain grace from god to sit down dear nigerians especially the young population let's sit down and learn this this passion to run around and have premature manifestations sit down sit down we must obtain grace from god 
but apostle i went to school you know it's not enough you must sit down there are three levels of education there is unlearning there is relearning there is learning there are things you have to unlearn there are things you have to learn as new there are things you have to relearn as emphasis if these three levels is not happening to you you are not really educated education is not just an awareness of a body of information no you must unlearn deconstruct many belief systems that are wrong you must learn then you must relearn it is unlearning learning and relearning that is education i will say it again if you want proper enlightenment not just spiritual enlightenment secular enlightenment you must unlearn you must learn you must relearn develop your mind ask any ceo the difference between an exceptional ceo a fulfilled politician a technocrat an intelligent person one who is doing much for the kingdom a great man of god our fathers of faith are all over this nation we love them we honor them we admire them can i tell you something one consistent thread that runs across all the fathers of faith in this nation is that they are exceptionally brilliant people mention one dull one and you'll be the first mentioning it and the only one mentioning it there is no dull father of faith that i know who is making global impact because ministry is more than preaching preaching only accounts for at least 30 percent of ministry there is administration there is leadership there is diplomacy there are all kinds of factors involved in ministry for them to win this much it is the holy spirit in partnership with an enlightened mind we have this idea that god just landed on them and commissioned them find out their labor find out the things they do the little that we are doing for God here, we can feel the heat and the disadvantage of not being enlightened. Please, I encourage you, from families to institutions, religious and secular institutions, business and all of that, we must settle down to contend for knowledge. Settle down to contend for knowledge. Challenge yourself to be enlightened. And don't let the devil make you think that what I'm sharing tonight is not important. It is absolutely important. The destinies of people are tied to your rising and your greatness. It is selfish to refuse to be great because more than yourself, there are people who will eat from the fruit of your greatness. Are we together? So discovery and then refining. When you begin to refine your mind and refine your gifts, it ushers you into the next phase of your season of preparation called the season of testing write it down the season of testing oh dear i wish i had time the season of testing can i tell you this if it is god you are doing business with before he commits to you destinies before he commits to you anointings and graces you must be tested genesis 22 please from verse 1 we're still looking at the life of abraham and it came to pass after these things remember genesis 12 abraham has an encounter with god he begins his journey Ten chapters later, we see him stepping into the next phase. It came to pass after these things that God did what? Tempt. Some verses will say, test Abraham. What was the test? Abraham, he said, behold, I am here. Next verse, please. He said, take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. Take note of lo only and lovest. Only son whom thou lovest. Get thee into a land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell you. Verse 3. Here's what the Bible says. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went on to the place which God had told him. We'll continue later on. But look, look at this. Look at this. 
God tells Abraham I want to make you a father of nations I will bless them that bless you cause him that causes you in thee shall all the families be blessed in other words I'm going to make you the landlord of the earth he willed the earth to Abraham are we together now and then Abraham did not know that as he kept obeying God transiting he would get to a point where God will now say now we are getting to the season where prophecy and destiny is about to be activated but not without a test the bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that everything that was happening was a test but abraham did not know it was a test can i tell you this this final phase of your preparation season is the hardest phase for most people ask any great man they will tell you the season of test is a season where you have to obtain grace from god the season of test will test you across three things number one it will test you across trust and integrity you will be tested you will be tested you will be tested your capacity to be a person of integrity will be tested beyond measure number two the second test is the test of patience the test of patience i can tell you this if it is God who is lifting you, he will stretch you from pillar to post. Man of God, let me tell you what he will do to you. As a great man on fire, God loving you, your pastor just looks at you and says, you are going to be the person opening the gate at the church. You look at the potential of your anointing compared to the miracle that just happened before you came and say pastor sorry i hope you know that two among these 10 testimonies came directly from me and yet god says go and do it can i tell you this the test of greatness achieves many things among them it must humble you to your lowest otherwise it's not god lifting you some of these insulting derogatory experiences we go through the man of god may not know god is using him to test you nobody knows that it's a test is it's only god it's not like men know if a man tries to test you he's not god it is at the end looking from hindsight you would know that it was not about isaac it was not about abraham it was about god saying for me to commit this kind to you this is where many people fail they fail the test can i tell you this the test of destiny will insult your pedigree the test of destiny will turn you sometimes you look at yourself and say i'm not a fool be careful the moment it starts looking like god is just allowing things to fall your hand like we call it be careful there are people today who would have become mighty men and women of god if they had submitted themselves to cleaning the chair they say no way I can't be carrying this heavy prophetic grace especially when you are serving and your superiors may not seem to be as gifted as you maybe someone is in that face right now listen carefully I've trained the leaders in this ministry to understand that anything at all God gives you do it with all your heart you do not know what season you are stepping into are we together go and ask many great men do you know what stephen was doing before he became that mighty man stephen was part of those who were serving tables there are many great men today who started by scrubbing the floors of their ceos and while they were scrubbing the floors they would hear discussions happening and they were cleaning all kinds of things while their contemporaries were saying i'm too big they were saying no 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 i love the lord father it's a privilege for me to do what i'm doing the moment you are too big to be tested you are also too big to be great or too small to be great i have told god and i told god this right from before he lifted me no matter what it is that i have to do is in the name of the lord and i'm serving you i will do it with all my heart i stand before the god of heaven and i'm telling you now if the lord asks me to drop this leadership and leave everything and go back to be an usher even in koinonia here i stand by the god of heaven i will do it i know you think i'm not all right but i will do it 
It's better to be wrong with God. Let me tell you how you know that the door of greatness is already closing in you. The moment what you were doing before, you now become too big to do it. Check yourself. Go for a retreat quickly. Some of us as it is today, if you hold a broom, you will be sick. May God forgive you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because you see, can I be honest with you? One of the ways to walk in humility is that occasionally in your life, disengage yourself with certain privileges, even if it's for a day, and you go back to the things you used to do. They will administer a measure of humility to keep you balanced. Because you see, as you rise, there will be people to serve you, protocol. You see me coming in and you see all these, my people, everything. And some of you, this is what you are looking at. When you look at all these things, say, oh God, I must be like Joshua Selman, not his prayer life, not his word life. What you want is this one. And God says, you lie. I'm not, I'm not, you don't cheat me like that. You go back and start that school of the spirit the season of testing this is the season where it will look like God is not even answering your prayer I've taught you here as a man of God you can pray for somebody who will go for the crusades and be raising people from wheelchairs and they bring somebody who is suffering from constipation you will almost lay all your hands on the person and nothing happens and the person says i'm disappointed i was told so much about you uh, i i i thought and you say me and god says keep quiet tell him god bless you you say god bless you and he leaves and you feel stupid at a point you say god what is the name of all these things god will send you to go and preach somewhere as soon as you finish you'll be waiting thinking an honorarium is coming they will just carry maybe orange or banana hold it in a leather and say sir may the lord who called you honor you and bless you listen 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 and you are standing there and wondering okay a three days conference and god says accept it quickly and go he's winning you of the lost for things tests most of us miss these seasons because we have an idea that the moment you are gifted the next thing after being gifted is celebration you lie not in god's economy there will be a season of test this is where many people are bought destiny and are bought greatness they are too big to serve they are too big to pray they are too big to do whatever it is that they do believe what I'm telling you for many years in my life I wanted to buy a car but God prohibited me this is true and at a point I said what is all this one now a car that will help me is still this gospel thing <laughs> the making of the great is painful you are not the only one apostle you don't know what is happening to me you think so how do you think everybody who got here got here it looks you see that season makes it painful and you think it's only you this is why mentorship is powerful because when you see the people sitting at the table of greatness like kung fu masters they laugh at you they say just continue continue you will get here god can give you an assignment and say from today and for the next six months four days out of every seven days you are fasting and from 12 o'clock till four you are praying and you say god for what i thought you said i'm a kingdom financier he says that's exactly the training of a kingdom financier god trains you as a kingdom financier like he's training a revivalist you will say god confirm it with speed you will have a dream someone will send you a text god will send another word so that you must do it with the exact word you must fast and you must pray and can i tell you this you will fast for two three months thinking there is a mighty crusade coming nothing will happen till you finish that fasting this is a test i'm explaining this to you because many of you are in this season now i tell you lift up your eyes look beyond the pain your salvation is near apostle God is calling me to be a kingdom billionaire huh. 
He will not ask you to open an account. He will ask you to empty everything in your account. Only God knows how many times. That is the test. I know you will cast that voice. You say, no, God doesn't work like that. I am telling you, he works like that. There is a way that God works like that. There are demons, yes. But there is a way that God works. You must give everything. I've taught you that the price for all of God is all of you. God will wait until they pay you arrears for one year he will not wait until they give you a seed it's easy when they touch you money but God will wait until they pay you your arrears and you say take that Isaac go to a mountain he can even say you should sow it to someone you don't like a ministry you don't like yours is to obey what do you think being a kingdom financier is just having an account with money and business ideas no sir what do you think being a man of God is just having a gift and a platform to speak uh -uh. for everyone you see who has tasted of greatness there is blood dripping on the altar believe me when I tell you this the only way to get to the throne is to pass through the cross I'm speaking to someone now because you are in a season of your life just help those under the anointing you are in a season of your life where it looks like nothing is happening this is applicable to all men apostle when i sleep i see a vision of a church and god is saying i will be a great man serving the purposes of god but i don't know what is happening why is it that nothing seems to be moving in my life fear not god is working with you let me tell you this if you never get to a point in your life where you don't even know the name of what you are doing it's not god who is training you you get to a point in your life where you say god, what are we doing just tell me the name of what we are doing are you getting what i'm saying now you can get a job of two hundred thousand and a job of eighty thousand and god can tell you go for the job of eighty thousand you say god do you know that i'm taking care of four people he says just go there now you see what i'm saying is not marketable because this is not what many people learn about kingdom greatness sometimes you just learn that oh i i wish i were lying i would have just told you i'm joking but i'm not what i'm saying is very serious and i tell you there are no exceptions to it swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life it's a little here a little there and then your day will dawn is at work in you changing everything in obedience to christ my brother my sister at this period of your life i want you to hold on the bible says do weeping endures there are times you cry but you still stay lord this fast i'm fasting as if i don't even know whether i'm touching my stomach or my back just fast it doesn't kill there are times that you sit down and you are praying and you are saying lord is it that i'm a pastor just encourage me by god says what you are is not your business you just know that you are a child of god and i'm making you become something if you want to claim the blessings of abraham be ready to carry isaac to that mountain we live in a generation that claims people's anointings and refuses their sacrifices anybody that you know who has become great today find out what they did there is always a season of preparation if you see anybody who breaks that rule run away from them they have nothing to offer you i have i tell you sincerely if you see any greatness that does not have a story and a track record of consistency with god there is not much to offer i've cried in my life oh you see me smiling all the time i'm only smiling before you ask god ah, the burden of this ministry the first time we organized crusade as a ministry then just starting we didn't even have money to pay the transport fare brothers and sisters this our generation must reduce this ungodly admiration that erodes the need for process 
please don't feel insulted i'm only stressing this because i want to pound it into your spirit behind every throne you see behind every throne you see there was a time i prayed for 72 hours non-stop my eyes did not know whether it was morning or night i don't say this to boast in the flesh but i am telling you ladies and gentlemen greatness does not just happen we live in a society that demeans the greatness and the value of people no I've had the honor and the privilege of knowing and being with a few of the fathers of faith in this nation. I tell you sometimes when you look at them, you can almost see in the spirit blood just dripping like rain on the ground. Their entire lives have become a drink offering. Before, even business people, before you admire people, you want to stretch your hands to the sick and they are healed. You want to tell someone stand up from a wheelchair and he stands you want to open a church or an assembly and god honors you with people please let me tell you this it is more than just claiming there is a school of the spirit there is a cup you must drink of and a baptism you must be baptized with they came to jesus and said can you grant that when you are exalted we will sit at your left and right he said the space is available but here is the condition can you drink of my cup and be baptized listen moses was a man who had been trained by the holy spirit do you know moses was a stammerer and yet look at the kind of heavy anointing he was carrying and he was quiet he didn't prophesy when the anointing on him came on 70 elders not children a part of it all none of them could stand and control it yet that's what one man was carrying and he was quiet training gives you stability it gives you stamina when you are in the school of the spirit especially say as a minister he will teach you to know when to speak he will teach you to know when to be quiet it's not everything that offends you say people are offending me in this church you've not gone through the school of the spirit when you go through he teaches you stability why do they do trainings for people before they promote them even in organizations am i right on that that before you promote people they call them and they have specialized trainings question what do they teach them there that they've not taught them before you are taking a director or something to become an agm and you sometimes they even go for retreats our politicians in this nation go for retreats what are they saying there the testing process is very difficult God will test everything he will be using you to do one day you will pray and it will look like the prayer is not answered and God will watch you after you have preached and said there is nothing my God cannot do you will feel as if his headache whether it's from the back of your head or the front you may not be able to explain and like Paul you will lay your hands I'm sorry I'm not giving us a lot of scriptural references I'm hurrying up I besought him thrice that this thorn be taken away from me and he says my grace is sufficient for you for my my strength is made perfect in your weakness how do you help the poor when you never become like that there is a man of God that God gave an assignment for one or two years that he should leave all his money and everything and go and live somewhere in this nation and he went and lived you would think he does not have anything it was the sacrifice in the course of that journey he received a burden for that land such a powerful evangelical burden and it changed his life on easy lies the head that wears the crown your season of preparation discovery development and refining and then the season of testing my prayer for you is that you will not give up during your season of test man of god hear me everything god told you he will still do that man of god that woman of god you are you don't look like it the bible says it does not yet appear just stay with god 
just stay with God dear CEO it's true that God called you you put your hands in your pocket the only thing you touch is the end of your pocket don't worry it is true you're a kingdom financier it will not come the way you think it will happen you are still in the school of the spirit can I tell you this don't be ashamed of your tears cry but stay whatsoever he tells you to do Let's hurry up so we can pray. When you are done with the season of preparation, then you are open to the next season of your life. It's called the season of manifestation. Oh, hallelujah, when you get to that season. When you get to that season, call the season of manifestation. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15. Please read with me everyone. One to read. And so, after he had what? He obtained the promise. One more time everyone please. And so, continuation to the story. After he had patiently endured. Endured what? the mockery endured what the shame endured what the pain endured what the ridicule as noah when he was building the ark there were people who were laughing and saying this man only god knows what you had for 120 years he was building that ark but a season would come called a season of manifestation if you cannot patiently endure there is no promise and so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise your season of appearing is when God opens the curtain of your destiny and you are ready to stand on the stage of life can I tell you the season of appearing happens so fast it will surprise you there has never been a slow there is there are faces to it there are three faces to your season of appearing but it can happen instantly look at Joseph Joseph is in the prison not knowing that by the next day by that same time he would be the prime minister the disciples were tarrying do you know the frustration of tarrying 120 people just waiting I'm sure somebody will say ah what is so special about the Holy Ghost that he has not come and they say keep quiet don't don't offend the Lord just do what he asks you to do listen to what I'm telling you can I tell you this? There is a mysterious way God designed the season of appearing. It has indicators, but you will never know the exact moment. You just keep being faithful. You don't know that by the next day, you are going to get a job. By the next day, the business proposal that you have written, you may never know, oh Saul, that you are one day left to meet Samuel. When Saul left his father's house, at a point they were tired they said let's go back he said no we can't go back we have come too far the same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to continue let's finish up there is a seer and as soon as they went by the gates they met this mysterious man called samuel samuel laughed he said go up i will come and tell you what is in your heart you will get up one morning thinking it will be like any other day and God will position someone you do not know that you have just wrapped up your season of training I can tell you this how do you know your season of training has come to an end God himself defines the moment for you but I tell you this for everyone who ended seasons a man was there to lift his hands if you are Joseph Pharaoh is there if you are Saul Samuel is there for as long as you have not seen your Samuel, keep moving. For as long as you have not seen Pharaoh, Joseph, keep interpreting the dreams for free. A day will come you will interpret it and it will not be for free again. But qualify. Do it for the wine presser for free. Do it for the baker for free. Let the wine presser forget you for two years. It's still a test. Because one night, Pharaoh will send for you. And on that day, you will not interpret for free again why will joseph interpret a dream for free interpret this for free and even beg the man 
and say please if you get to pharaoh tell him i am innocent and he forgot but when the moment was come In the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 